Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome back to our YouTube channel once again. And it is my hope and prayer that this video is actually going to find you guys in good health. Personally, I am fine. Kisumu is also fantastic. And maybe you could also let me know where you are watching the video from. The county or the country in case you are out of the republic. Ladies and gentlemen, there were dramatic scenes in parliament earlier today. Moses Masika Wetangula, the speaker of the National Assembly, kicked Mili Mabona Obiambo and my women rep Rosa Buyu out of parliament. The two were actually protesting the move by Masika Wetangula not to kick Sabina Chege as the deputy minority whip in the National Assembly. Instructed our litigation council to challenge the orders in court. As your speaker, I remain cognizant of the obligation imposed by Article 3 of the Constitution on me to respect, defend, and uphold the Constitution in guiding the proceedings of the House. On one hand, the minority party has met all the procedural requirements to effect a change of its leadership. On the other hand, I'm confronted by a court order that specifically cited both the Speaker and the House as parties to a judicial process that seems to challenge an administrative process. Despite the sympathies I may hold for the predicament that the minority party finds itself, this House has consistently demonstrated its willingness to abide by court orders, by orders of the court relating to the exercise of its quasi-judicial and administrative functions. Even where certain orders have been adverse to the interests of the House, we have dutifully obeyed them and sought to set aside the orders that we were not in agreement with. Honorable members, from the foregoing, my hands are therefore tied with regard to the court order that has been brought to my attention. Until and unless further information is provided that this order has been varied or set aside, the court order effectively suspends the decision by the minority party on the replacement of the Honorable Sabina Chege as the debut minority whip. As a seasoned legislator and experienced party leader myself, my heart sinks wherever I see a dispute that may be resolved through internal dispute resolution mechanisms being referred to in an adversarial court system. In my experience, court battles may be counterproductive and may ultimately destroy long-standing political relationships. I encourage the minority party and the Jubilee party to seek an amicable resolution of whatever it is that may be the bone of contention with the coalition and between the members of its constituent party. I am confident that an amicable resolution of the issues shall positively contribute to the continuity of the business of the House and its vibrancy. In issuing my communication of 4th May 2023, I did guide that I was hesitant to recognize the Jubilee Party as a parliamentary party despite its meeting the threshold prescribed under the standing order. At this stage, I am still hesitant to recognize the party. That's Moses Masika Wetangula making the ruling. And then the two ladies protested. And the moment they started protesting, hell broke loose. And in fact, Masika Wetangula was then forced to kick out others. Actually, seven of them. There is Sabina Chege was kicked out. Rosa Buyu, Mili Wabona, uh, TJ Kajuang, Catherine Omanyo, Fatuma Mnyazi, and Joyce Kamene. But in real sense, Masika Wetangula wanted to kick out Mili Mabona and Rosa Buyu. May order list, I order Honorable Rosa Buyu and Honorable Mili Odiambo to leave the chamber. Honorable Rosa Buyu and Honorable Mili Odiambo, you are ordered to leave the chamber. You are ordered to leave the chamber. Honorable Rosa Buyu 
And Honorable Emilio Diambo, you leave the chamber. Order. Honorable Rosa Buyu and Emilio Diambo will leave the chamber. You will leave the chamber. Yes. Order. And the biggest question which I keep on asking myself, why is Kenya Kwanza, which is William Ruto, keen on protecting Sabina Chega? Because even if it's a matter of forceful takeover of Jubilee Party, the fact will remain that even if they were to take Jubilee Party, the position of the deputy minority whip will still remain on the minority side. The fact that Kenya Kwanza and alleged jubilee have already entered into a coalition, it means Sabina Chege cannot really serve as the minority, deputy minority leader. Because even if you look at the Senate, Azimio effected the changes. They kicked out Fatuma Dulo and replaced her with uh, Ledama Olekina. And things are just okay. Why are they protecting Sabina Chege? Is Sabina Chege that special to them? Whip. She has a chase car and many other things that accompany you being a whip, even if it's a whip of an opposition. So, she had the powers in the parliament. She sold her soul. So, who can make a country burn? A person who does not go to pray or a person who uses hypocrisy to lie to Kenyans. See, we are saying to Ambiana Ukweli, Nandiyo Ukweli. So Sabina can ban the country because she's yes. a hypocrite. Yes. She is lying to Kenyans, telling Kenyans, oh, let's look at the country. Oh, the country needs us all. But her, what has she done to the country? She lied to the country after eating the Bible of being a whip. She used the Bible and altered, uh, adultered the Bible herself yes. and gone the other side. And she forgot what the Bible says. So when you tell me about Sabina, you're telling me about a liar, a hypocrite, a cheater. In this video, I want to explain to you guys why Kenya Kwanza is actually not willing to let Sabina Chege go. Before you do that, for those who are watching this channel for the first time, please take a second or two, click that subscribe button so that next time we produce a video like this, YouTube will automatically notify you. And to the subscribers, I want to continue thanking you guys for your continued support because without that support, this channel cannot be where it is. And without any further ado, please allow me to give you the reasons why Kenya Kwanza is not keen on letting Sabina Chege lose, his, lose her position as the deputy minority whip. Number one, if you ask me, Kenya Kwanza is just out to frustrate Azimio. Because for me, I've been wondering, why would they insist on uh, doing all this when they know that even Kenyans who are gullible understand that the moment Sabina Chege announced and is working with the Kenya Kwanza, she just ought to have resigned. Because ideally, the work of a whip and the deputy, they're supposed to whip their members to vote in a particular manner. And also to rally them in a, a particular direction. And there's a, there's a reason why the parliament is split into majority and minority. So there's no way Azimio will offer their oversight role effectively when Sabina Chege is working with government on the other side. It can't work like that. So for me, I tend to think that they understand all this, but they're just keen on frustrating Azimio. So that's number one. Number two, and this I think I'm repeating it. I once opined here that the other reason why they're doing this is that they want to mark time for Jubilee takeover. They want to first of all ensure that Ruto takes control of Jubilee Party. 
Because if you listened to the speaker, speaker's ruling, Moses Watangula's ruling, he was very clear on one thing, that the minority side followed all the laid down procedures. But he could not remove Sabina Chege because of a court order. So probably these guys sat down and they agreed that for uh, Weta, he had no option. So these guys had to go to court and probably they identified uh, a friendly judge to stop parliament from effecting any changes. Because remember, we have three arms of government. We have the executive, we have the judiciary and parliament. They're supposed to be interdependent. They're supposed to work independently. And none of those sides should actually go and uh, influence the decisions of, of another one. Because what this means is that someone tomorrow will go to court and even frustrate a bill in parliament. That cannot happen. So for me, these guys just want a situation where they are sure that now Jubilee is in control of Sabina Chege and Kanini Kega. Then they officially join Kenya Kwanzaa. Once they join Kenya Kwanzaa, then they can now leave this position. But right now, if they were to leave before taking control of Kenya Kwanzaa, then someone can rule that Jubilee is on Azimio's side. And that's something they don't want. Because again, politics is a game of numbers, real or perceived. The fact that Jubilee has elected members of parliament who are now on the other side means that they, they are trying to protect that also. So, so they're just marking numbers. They're just marking time. Number three, in my view, I think it's about Mount Kenya politics. And that explains why they were easy in releasing or letting uh, Fatuma Dulo leave. But not Abina Cheke. Because if, if Sabina Chege were to leave, then it's going to mean that <coughs> Jeremiah Kiondi and the group are in control. And that will send a signal to the mountain. And that signal is, is what they don't want. Because Yuanamoto is keen on the mountain. They don't want any other political party to emerge out of mountain. And number four, in my view, I also tend to think that Wetangula is just working on the orders of William Ruto. William Ruto has told him, do everything possible, ensure Sabina Chege is protected. And that's why yesterday you heard with your own ears Sabina Chege appealing to Moses Wetangula to make a favorable ruling. Probably they don't really know the kind of ruling which they were expecting. Then you should be start you should start monitoring the activities at the registrar of political parties. Because that's where another blow is going to emerge. And Uru Kenyatta should start thinking, in fact, I said this and I'm repeating, Uru Kenyatta should start thinking about what next? What next after Jubilee takeover? Is he going to form a new political party? And if you ask me, my last point is that all this, what we are witnessing, are just intended to divert the attention of the country from the finance bill. You know, Kenya Kwanzaa has found themselves in a very tight corner. They've been cornered with this finance bill. Kenyans are debating. The finance bill is now before parliament. Then from parliament, instead of parliamentarians debating, you find the issue of Sabina Cheke being discussed, members of parliament being kicked out. Why? They just want to divert the attention of Kenyans from this particular bill, the finance bill. So Kenyans must be smart and focus on that particular finance bill. Yesterday, Citizen TV hosted a very powerful show. They gave experts opportunity to explain to Kenyans. They gave also, as I mean, Kenya Kwanzaa leadership, MPs and uh, the cabinet to explain. And all Kenyans agree that Kwame Weno carried the day. So those are some of the things which are really bothering them. I don't know what you think. That's my take. Thank you guys and may you have a good day. Bye-bye.